just going to go ahead and start. Thank you, Steve. So everyone, we're going to be uh, recording. And um, I will share my uh, screen and just, well, actually, maybe I'll just do it now in terms of share the screen and do this, share, and then, um, good, looks like we're sharing, and then, okay. Nope, I think I, I think I did it wrong again. I think it was right before. There. Okay. Is that Steve, is that there right? You go. Yep. Okay. That's good. good. Yep. Thank you. Good. good, you're good. Okay. So what we're gonna do is um just go ahead and start with the um antitrust policy reminder. So just take a look at that as I um welcome you all to today's meeting. And um, you know, this hasn't changed though, so, you know, if uh if we get into NT any issues, you know, where we're talking about anything that's antitrust, uh, please speak up and uh, we will go ahead and stop and uh, and pivot. So there's never been an issue and I don't expect it to be an issue today. Okay, so um, agenda, we're going to uh, introduction of anyone new to our meeting. Uh, today, we're going to review committee charges and then uh, we're gonna be talking about upcoming meetings, which really, you know, um, our next opportunity is really in um, June at the um, annual education conference, which this year is in Grand Rapids. So I hope to see you there. We're gonna have a special industry um, time together, a breakfast. And um, and then after that, we actually typically take the summer off. So we take um, July and August off and then we regroup in September. Um, so we're gonna be talking about, you know, different things that you're gonna wanna see um, next, um, you know, kind of next September and for that next year. Um, but before we go into, into um, introductions, um, two things. One is I really want to apologize uh, for last week, for those of you that were on our year-end meeting, um, uh, Dion and I were both at Food Safety Summit and it wasn't on either of our calendars and I take accountability for it on my end. Um, so I am so sorry that, uh, that there was this confusion and that we left you hanging. Um, so please um, accept my apology for that. And secondly, um, I just want to... Um, apologize for not being on the meeting in April. I had a, a, a family um, emergency come up. And so I want to thank um, Dion and I, I know um, Michael Robertson uh, also kind of pinched in um, from Publix and Laurel, you're part of it too. Um, so you guys just uh, were able to take the meeting um, kind of just like with a day's notice. So thank you for that. And again, my apologies for um, last month. So let's go ahead and start with um, anybody new today. Please let me know who you are, uh, who you're with, where you live, and uh, Dion started something last time about like a fun fact about you. So do we have anyone new? And um, I have to say like to enable to see, in order to see who's here, I have to kind of look this way on my other computer. So um, to make that not happen and not be awkward, if you're new, just go off, uh, off of mute and let me know who you are. Um, I'm somewhat new. Um, my name is um, Melissa Vaccaro. I am a senior food safety program specialist with uh, NEHA. Oh, perfect. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, Melissa. Always good to see NEHA. Any other new people today? Okay. So with that, we will just keep moving. Okay, so what we need to do today is discuss charges. Um, we've been really fortunate this past, you know, uh, probably since the fall, um, that our meetings have been such, um, you know, that we've had good speakers and great discussion afterwards, and we really haven't gotten to the charges, um, but we really do need to, um, to talk about these a little bit. And so this is just a free um, exchange and discussion, you know, with everyone here. Um, so the first charge is solicit a worthy candidate for the Associates Award. Um, Steve Morris, do you know, do we have somebody lined up or do we know how that's working? Um, the, that usually gets um, awarded at the uh, Wiley Banquet at the June meeting. Yeah, I would think that the committee would have submitted a name to the awards. Um, there has been emails about awards yeah. submissions. So I... Do not know if, if this c committee has submitted a name yet or not. Okay, so um, let me follow up on that. And um, But I will also put it out there that if you have anyone that you're thinking would be a good candidate for the Associates Award, 
Um, the um, application form is right on the AFTO website, or if you need help, uh, just let me know, um, either for this year or for next year. My sense is that there's probably still time for this year, um, but if not, then um, let's just get that rolling for next year. Okay, so the next part is, um, this is always a really good topic for discussion, right? So um, what sort of regulatory concerns do you have that we need to you know, filter up to the board um, so that we can get help with? Um, I, I will go ahead and start. I, I think, you know, one of the things, um, you know, I'm in manufacturing, one of the uh, items that we have has to do with um, with swabbing. I mean, for some reason, the last two months, we've had probably three inspections uh, for swabbing. So uh, not for cause, um, just kind of routine swabbing. And, um, you know, and that's usually fine. But boy, we've gotten a lot of um of our investigators who want to swab zone one areas. And I know FDA thinks of zone one a little bit different than General Mills does, um, but it has just caused a lot of churn. So, um, so, so I'm bringing that to this group. Has anyone else had that? Or is that something that we think is important enough to, to bring up to the board? And third, anything else like that that you guys are encountering um, in your day-to-day? Did they give you any explanation as to why it was uh, so frequent? In, in terms of like why we're having so many inspections? No. no. <laughs> yeah. I wish. No, no, no. And 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 why we're having um so much so much swabbing. I don't know. And again, like I I'm completely fine with the swabbing, like whatever. Um, you know, as long as there's zones 2 through 4, you know, once you're in zone 1, then for us, we have to have a clean break and we put product on hold and, you know, that whole deal, which is super disruptive. And if it's for cause, I completely get it. But if it's a routine, like, uh, you know, it, it's just, um, it's super hard to justify. I, I would say that we've seen an increase in inspections and investigations, you know, especially I would say PC investigations, but our process is a little different on the beverage side because it's enclosed. You know, I, I will say, um um and, and you know enclosed and then also obviously csds and, and gatorade and high acid products you know there's yeah. really not a lot of not a lot of evidence to support the growth of any kind of microorganisms as a matter of fact one could argue that some of our products actually reduce microorganisms you know um but anyway um i think on our end you know to group it with what you said, uh, uh, Raquel, um, we are seeing a large increase of preventive control investigations where some some of the questions, um, and, and this is unfamiliar with the process, and we understand that we have new investigators, but there there seems to be a lot of time spent explaining, you know, to counter what you said, why we don't do swabathon. Right. And, 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 you know, well, hey, getting inside piping and things like that. And, and certainly we do allergen and other testing and rinse water testing, you know, certainly through our system. But there's a lot of head scratching when they say, why don't you test this drain over here? And we say, well, that has nothing to do with what's inside the pipes above your head. Right. Um, so we've had to have that back and forth. And it's been escalated with some supervisors a few times. And it seems to be a kind of repetitive issues. So I would say, I would say the increase in investigations, and I've talked to some of our other counterparts in the beverage industry, you know, outside of outside of PepsiCo, and they're seeing the same things with some of the experience and, and I guess understanding, process understanding challenges um, that we're seeing. So we're not we're not alone in 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 that endeavor. And then um, there was a there was a second thing I wanted to bring up, but I think we're addressing it as an industry. You know, there are some concerns with the new appendix one that has recently come out, and we're already seeing that, even though it's draft guidance, right? We're already seeing that cited in some of our investigations, and and we haven't even had chances as an industry, right, to comment on it. Um, but there are some unique things that, that we don't understand where some of the logic came from. And, and I'll just quote one being selfish, selfish beverage plug, right? Arsenic and carbonated soft drink. We, we don't understand where that came from um, because, 
you know, there was no chemical hazards on the other appendix one, and there's no historical evidence that arsenic is commonality um, in carbonated beverages, uh, carbonated soft drinks. So, so anyway, there's there's some concerns because these things are being brought up, and we as an industry haven't even had a chance to to comment on them yet, even though you know they've essentially issued the draft guidance, if you were. were. So those those would be my. I'll get off my uh, beverage pedestal, but I am seeing some similar challenges. It's not exactly with Suavasans, but I would say just experience-wise, we're, we're, we're facing some of the same um, challenges. Yeah, yeah, and I would, I would, I would echo that. Um, and I, and I've always thought, you know, it's it's our responsibility to help train these new investigators. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know how to say this in a really politically correct way. I, I don't mind training new investigators, but boy, when they get cocky and then assume that they know our process or better than we do, it just gets, it's a little hard to, um, uh, to keep training them in a way that's um, yeah. respectful and polite. Right. So, and, and, you know, yeah. whatever, you know, we, we, it's just a day and, and, you know, the next day is hopefully better, but yes. Um, we have had our share of, of training, which I think uh, PepsiCo does as well. Yeah, yeah. And I don't mind training, to your point. Training, and we've had plenty of investigators saying, wow, that makes sense. But I think when yeah. when conversations, and we're having the same conversations, and not only does it take hours of our time, but it also, you know, you know, on the investigator side, right, whatever agency it is, it takes hours of their time, and they escalate it to their yeah. supervisors, and everybody's involved. It just it would seem to be much more efficient if 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 somehow you know in in you know as an industry we could get out blanket messaging about certain things you know <laughs> that's all yeah 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 I am with you great thank you for that Jeffrey um anybody else what other concerns need to be brought up to the to the board. Hi, Raquel. Hey. This is Twee. Um, hi. I just wanted to uh, make a, two quick comments. Um, so WAFDO, uh, which will be in Sacramento this year, uh, September 24th through, I believe, the 27th. Is that right, Ken? Um, I don't have my calendar in front, in front of me, but we are doing a pre-conference workshop with environmental monitoring. So AFTO will be uh, providing that one day training. If there are any industry folks that would like to send their employees um, there, and as we all know, there's a lot of um, people who work for AFTO who are previous regulators that can also answer a lot of questions for you if you are wanting, you know, um, maybe more clarification. And then uh, with respect to the increase in swabbing and or, you know, just the verification of processes as a previous regulator, I will say that even if I knew someone's process, I'm not gonna walk into a facility and assume it's the same or assume that I know what they're doing. So if I'm asking questions and it appears that I don't know what I'm talking about or I don't understand your process, it's more me asking questions so that I understand it or verify that you are doing exactly what you said that you were doing or complying with regulation. So it's not always a matter of not knowing. And I will say sometimes that is the case as well, but sometimes it's more a mer matter of verification or clarification. So I just wanted to, to state that as well, because you know, even, even in my uh, years of um, inspecting the same facility, I know what they do, but I'm not gonna assume and I will always ask and it'll be the same questions. So I just wanted to make that comment. And I love that tweet. Like, if we have a hundred of you come in uh, asking questions, that is absolutely <laughs> great. I mean, seriously, right? Because it just shows an openness and a willingness um, to understand our process and to learn our process, and then to help us evaluate. You know, where oh, are we going? For sure. I for sure, you can. You know, I'll take that twelve hours a day, any day. Oh yeah, and you know, you can't you can't assume that. Um, you know, the operator is doing what they should be doing because we know turnover rates, we know changes of processes, we know, you know, there's all sorts of things that could be variables that might have changed from the last time we were in. Um, and then also, you know, it's really what I used to tell my operators was when I come in for an inspection, show me what you know. 
show me, educate me, train me so that I understand and I can apply the correct provisions and or uh, regulations for your specific operation. Understand that you understand which regulations apply to your operation because, you know, there are a lot of regulations and some of them apply, some of them don't. And every single time I come in, I see something different. So, <laughs> so yeah. I'm going to ask all sorts of questions. I love that. But yeah, just wanted to promote um, the pre-conference workshop um, in Sacramento. Would love to see more industry people there. And like I said, it'll be an all-day event. Um, great time to connect with uh, regulators as well as previous regulators and very specifically about environmental monitoring. Thank you. And I'll throw it out. Like I went to our, our um, so I'm part of, of, of NCF, though. And so you know, I went to their conference, which was in Fargo you know, last fall and, you know, anybody in industry, like connect with your uh, local affiliates because they're fantastic, you know, and it really helps you connect with the regulators that are in your area. And, um, and it's just a really good way to, to hear what they're hearing and then to, yeah. to contribute as well. So, yeah. yeah and, you know, it, it really doesn't hurt um, to, you know, develop that relationship and that rapport because, you know, like I said, as a previous regulator, like people, think that you're not human, but you actually are. And, <laughs> you know, you, you can sympathize with the pains that they go through. Um, you know, me having been on both sides of the fence, you know, I'm both industry and previous regulator. And so I would always tell my operators, Hey, if you guys are wanting to do something and you're not 100% sure, you don't know which, um, regulations apply to you, just reach out, you know, talk to me. We can speak hypothetically. If you're afraid there's going to be enforcement action, just let's just talk it through tell me exactly what you're doing. Don't withhold anything. Cause that's usually when you get in trouble is when you're like, don't tell them this, you know, so let's just be open, honest, tell me what you're doing or what you want to achieve. And I will tell you, yes, it complies, or you might want to consider this, or you might want to do some validation for this, you know, whatever it is. Cause you know, it's, it's free consulting for you, or you can hire someone like me and pay me to tell you what to do. So, <laughs> you know, either way, like, I mean, it's free to you. And um, whether it be at an event or just, you know, when they come in, you know, ask them all sorts of questions. Right. So yep. so that's all I just wanted to wanted to kind of put that out there because I understand it is it's it's not easy when you are on on the uh, operational side and, you know, you have a lot of things that you need to get done. And then all of a sudden you have this crew of inspectors coming in and it's like, oh, great. You know, we have these uh, deadlines and and we're not going to make it now because we have to, you know, chaperone and, uh, you know, walk through this inspection. But, you know, that's kind of the name of the game when you're, you know, uh, wanting to operate. And, and I do remind people, hey, if you have a license to operate somewhere, you know, that's that's the condition of your license is that you will be inspected. So and you have to comply. And if you don't, then, you know, there, there might potentially be repercussions. But that is a condition of your license to operate, to manufacture what you're manufacturing. Yeah, yeah. And like I said, I think most, I don't know, maybe not most, but inspections are fine. <laughs> you know, they just, let's just work together to get to like the, you know, like, you know, let's just both have this open attitude of let's find if there are any issues and then work through them together. So I, I love that tweet. Oh yeah, and, for and sure. It, and then it sounds like Jeffrey uh, is interested in going to WAFTO. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah. what I'll do, Raquel, is I'll send it to you or the yeah. group. I, I, I'll see how I can send it. I'm creating the flyer right now. Ken, thank you. September 23rd through the 27th in Sacramento. Um, you know, registration is open now, but you can go on to our WAFTA website. You can also follow us on our social media handles. Um, there's going to be three conference works, three pre-conference workshops. One is environmental monitoring. One is the second segment of the seafood HACCP class, which Ken will be um, doing. And then for me, I will be conducting a cannabis inspections workshop um, for those who, even though, you know, cannabis is, uh, you know, has been around for quite some time in Colorado, it's still new in certain parts of the country. And so um, we're doing that as well. Um, and then we're going to have some great agenda items with kava, kratom, uh, psilocybin, Amanita muscaria, all that fun stuff, you know, because we like to, we as in the Western, <laughs> the Western region are, you know, uh, like to rock the boat a little bit and just kind of uh, address all of these things uh, head on. So please come on out to the WAFTO conference. We would love to see everybody there. And I will share um, that that information with you, Raquel, so that you can disseminate as well to other you know industry as well. 
That would be perfect. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Twee. Any other uh, concerns that need to be brought up to the board? You know, I mean, one uh, based on this, and you know, last week at the uh, Food Safety Summit, we had a panel on terms of, you know, how to, you know, how regulators and industry can kind of interact better and and more productively, and maybe that is just something that um, that APTO can can help with. And I don't know if it's providing seminars or something, you know, but like, how do you, how do you, how do we get these two areas together to um, I don't know to both be open both be looking at, you know, uh, uh, what the, the main goal is, which is public, public health. So, um, yeah, I, th I think that would okay. be great. Like yeah. operators yeah. need to understand that they shouldn't be scared. And then yeah. inspectors need to understand that operators are doing the best that they can. And, you know, they're open to suggestions. So, you know, come in there and don't come in there with an iron fist, you know, come in there to help educate operators and be open to what they're doing and and be welcoming with questions and not say okay i'm going to write this down as a violation it could be a consulting uh type of um inspection but again operators please please reach out because we're not scary we no. can be but we're not <laughs> yeah. no no you're just right you're your people that want public health just like we do so absolutely yeah and and i think we're Kel and Tui, you bring up a good point that there were so much has changed in the last I guess going on four years now between digital acceleration, the pandemic turnover, organizational changes, both within industry as well as regulatory, right? And it continues, right? And the pace is, in my opinion, getting faster. Um, you know, if there were more forums to be able to build that familiarity, you know, I'm I'm all for that because the more the more that regulatory and industry engage, the more that we can address. The commonalities and, and, and ensure safe product going to the consumers, you know, and, and understanding on both sides. I mean, that's 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 the best thing for everybody, honestly. So I'm all for that. However, we do that. I don't know. That's not. A, I don't think we can solve that on this call. But that's just maybe something that you know yeah, for the industry to to talk about with the board. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. What other concerns need to be raised with the board? Is anyone out there concerned about the um, all the different state um, legislation that's being passed in terms of um, labeling different, you know, like PFAS? Well, well, PFAS. I was thinking more like um, colors and bromates and you know that sort of you know kind of state specific labeling, which you know obviously for for companies that are national, then it becomes national labeling. I, I know we we're yeah. talking about that a lot. Yeah, yeah, we're we're talking about it, um, and we're we've been pretty proactive, um, you know, in terms of since a lot of these things in Europe, you know, already already fell. We've been proactive in our market, so you know, the the additives we're not as concerned about. But I mean, what I'd say holistically, we're concerned with the patchwork, right? Like you said, you know, we have some states doing that. Other states doing why, um, you know, we're seeing a big uptick in certain states starting to do their own PFAS testing, you know, um, which I, it's, you know, if you think years ago, if you thought, you know, certain products would be picked up outside of bottled water, I mean, bottled water, you know, we've, we've been seeing that, but if you, you see other products getting picked up for PFAS testing, you know, that's starting to happen more and more. And we treat that just like, pathogen testing, right? Because you never know what a lab is going to get versus what you get in-house, and you don't want to have that um, tit for tat. So we te te treat it just like zone one testing, right? But as these chemical hazards, and I do think there'll be more focus on that from a regulatory, right? But as these chemical hazards become more and more prominent um, um, in terms of testing and easier to test and regulatory um, governance, what does that look like? you know, from, from an industry perspective, I think it's something we need to consider because we are starting to see slowly creeping up in terms of, hey, I'm in your plan, I'm doing a regulatory investigation, guess what, I'm gonna also take a couple samples off your line for PFAS testing um, and or other chemical testing. So that, how do you treat that? Is that treated differently from pathogen testing? We treat it no differently because 
what if they find what if the laboratory or whatever equipment calibrate you just never know um even if it's not there or your testing contradicts it you know once they have a positive result or a result where they you might have what a certain state considers a hazardous substance you know you have to react to that so out of an abundance of caution of course we hold everything so uh, you know as this happens more and more in addition to swabathons and other types of testing you know I think we really need to consider that. But I, I hadn't heard that they were um, taking samples for for PFAS. I'm going to reach out to my to my peer and and friend Arthi. Arthi, have they done that at our plants at General Mills? No, they haven't. Um, we haven't been doing that uh, that I know of. We haven't have received any requests for that. But um, I suppose I'm I'm not too surprised that certain states are doing that. And we can follow up on that too, Raquel, with one of our internal teams, our issues management team, to see if they're hearing more about that. Yeah, that's, that's a great watch out, Jeff, Jeffrey, because yeah, yeah. <laughs> cause we need to put plans in place in, in case that uh, it starts being tested. How about anybody else yeah. on this call? Have they had any samples taken for PFAS? I guess I'm just the lucky one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Which is the beauty of, of this kind of meeting, right? Because I hadn't even thought about that. So it, it's good to get that watch out. So, okay, great, great. Um, okay, so, um, you know, if, if there are any other concerns, just read, uh, bring them up. Um, how about, uh, let's move into charge three. Charge three is about increasing industry membership and participation. Um, so any ideas on increasing membership? I'll, I'll, I'll start us off by, saying that last week at the food safety summit, I forget there was some sort of question. And um, and so, you know, I started by saying, you know, like a really good way to get that information is to join, you know, an industry group like um, like AFTO and the industry, um, you know, membership committee, because then you're, you know, you're, you're part of these dis discussions. Um, so, you know, I think that's one way is to, um, you know, to speak at conferences and kind of to bring it up. Um, any other ideas in terms of um, increasing membership. And maybe Jeffrey, I'll, you know, like PepsiCo used to not be a member. So what brought you guys in? This, as you know, um, and I, and actually I think it was, well, must have been two years ago or maybe three years ago. I can't remember the first in-person yeah. uh, or the return to in-person um, educational conference after the pandemic. Uh, we decided to, to sign up, you know, as part of, some of our, you know, strategic outlook, um, um, just to see what it was all about. Because, you know, hey, we we let's be honest, we see the states and federal in our plant, so why not engage with an organization that talks to both, right? <laughs> so um, um, it was awesome, you know. And there was a whole industry session that year where we engaged not only with FDA but our state regulator partners and. FDA, Michael Rogers was there and Eric Mettler and there's a bunch yeah. of people there from, from within the FDA that really were listening to some of the feedback industry was given. And there's a lot of positivity that came out of that meeting. Now, that being said, you know, obviously they FDA has completely reorged and things have changed. But one thing that hasn't changed, at least in my opinion, within AFTO, because I went to the conference last year um, and been doing this ever since, is the engagement and the ability to share Right and and network. I just I, I I don't you can't find that anywhere else. There is there is nothing more valuable you know to Tui's point of being able to contact somebody, have an honest conversation um, about true reality of 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 the food industry and things that we all experience as regulators and in industry um, on a daily basis, right? Uh, or or things that are emerging. I mean. You know, to your point, this chemical hazard thing. There's a lot of push from from consumer groups and, and public outcry, and there may or may not be scientific evidence around that, but how do we navigate those pressures? We're, we're getting it both on the regulatory side as well as the industry side. So, you know, how do we share our experiences and go on this journey together? Um, I don't see another forum that is as fruitful, I guess is a good word, um, as this one, right? To get everybody on the same page. And the, in the interaction with the state, um, it's awesome. Like I, I don't see how else you, you get that done as well. So that's that's my experience. You know, we've been anytime I go to um conferences or other places where people bring up, you know, hey, I really want to engage 
with regulatory, I always I always mention this. As a matter of fact, I think I brought it up on it might have been the last call or the call before that, and and I did uh, give them some resources. But the water reuse committee, as water reuse becomes a bigger thing and spreads not only in the environmental areas, environmental concerns of water reuse and sustainability, but into the realm of food safety, where there's going to be a lot of regulatory and, and a lot of new not. And I'm sure your company is doing it too, Raquel. You know, our company is definitely heavily invested in big time novel water reuse processes, right? And, and we need to bring regulatory with us, not only to provide their feedback so that we can make sure we're doing everything um, on the environmental and the food safety side, right? But also so that they understand and we can all understand this process because they're going to, everybody's going to see this more and more, right? Truth of the matter is out West is going to be first, but it ain't going to be the last, right? So, um, um, and it's moving very fast. So that's, you know, I, I did at the water reuse conference, you know, everybody was talking about all the environmental entities they were engaging. And I brought up in front of everybody, you know, was, I don't know, room about 60, 70 individuals. I said, you know, who's engaging with the state? And there, you know, at, it, with state food safety and regulatory agencies, and there was kind of crickets. And so I had given them, you know, after I had talked to a couple of the leaders of that, that, that subcommittee and given them, you know, AFTO, and hopefully they're engaging with Steve. I, I gave them Steve's information, and, and I want to get them more involved, too. You know, I think that there's so much opportunity out there to get more people involved. And in and, and industries, you know, it's surprising where you run into a lot of industry, um, you know. So uh, so anyway, I guess that's my spiel for the day. <laughs> I just don't know how to, how to, you know, get that kind of story out there. You know, I mean, We've found huge benefit. You found huge benefit. You know, the people that are on this call likely have found benefit. How do you know for the people that aren't on this call? How do we, how do we share? You know that benefit and like, uh, yeah, I'm not exactly sure <laughs> how to how to reach yeah. those people, especially like the smaller, you know, the smaller, you know, industry folks or retail or you know, um, you know, or, or drug and device folks. Like, how do we how do we get those? Because I think I think for them that I mean. I think their benefit is even greater than ours. Yeah. I mean, I think I, I'm going to continue these conferences I go to. Yeah. Um, um, and I'm, I'm going to continue because I'm, you know, there's been a lot of, there's been a lot of turn, right. Even, even within the industry. And um, I think some people are not aware that, that, you know, of what exactly after is and what are the benefits. So I think if, I think we need to continue to, utilize at least as big companies and I, you know maybe it's different for small and medium size but i think as big companies and we have a fiscal responsibility to continue to promote um all the benefits of, of these interactions because the truth of the matter is more regulatory the more industry that participates in this the better everyone will be really. yeah so i'm going to call on, on damien and um so damien you know and I, I know you know um Publix has been always, you know, a, a great supporter of Acto. But like when you think of the smaller retailers, um, and like I said, like at the Food Safety Summit, um, you know, there there was somebody, it was like a small retailer in Wisconsin, right? I think they had like nine stores. And so they were wondering, like, how do I connect with my my regulators? And so that's why, you know, I mentioned Acto. But I mean, how, how for, you know, for um, for retail stores like that, like Publix, um, or the smaller ones, how do you guys connect with with those folks or how should they connect, do you think? And sorry to put you on the spot, Damien. And, and, and if you're talking, you might be on mute. Hi, this is Tara. I'm going to jump in there yeah. and um, just respond. So for the grocery store in industry members, uh, FMI, is where they're engaged in. And then for the convenience stores, it's the National Association for Convenience Stores, NACS. And then for the restaurants, it's the Restaurant Association. That's typically how they go through them to have those associations be advocates for them. So they may not actually need AFTO, right? Because if they already have that I mean, do they have that connection with the regulators through those associations or those associations? No, they do not. They do not yeah, have yeah. those connections. They rely on those um, 
eight associations, they rely on those associations. So we, okay. I think there is an opportunity out there for industry to engage and be more engaged. But right now that's currently the situation they rely on it. Yeah, and <clears throat> this is Eric Moore. I'll, I'll kind of add to Tara's comment. I think other, um, you know, other portions of the food industry, namely, you know, sea stores, restaurants, and uh, grocery retail operations, um, they leverage those organizations to, um, you know, to do a lot of um, advocacy work mm -hmm. in Washington with, you know, senators, um, you know, whether that's on impending bills um, or getting grants and, uh, you know, big time, you know, like high dollar funding, um, even to the point where, uh, you know, the American Frozen Food Institute is, you know, his, his, uh, his really been spearheading. I don't know if Donna is on this call or not, but uh, Donna, Dr. Donna Guerin, um, yeah. her, uh, her group has really been spearheading a major initiative uh, to influence policy change around listeria in uh in the manufacturing world so it to bring our requirements um in alignment with canadian and european standards um rather there being you know a zero presence um uh policy there is an acceptable amount of non-pathogenic you know right obviously non-listeria monocytogenes presence acceptable um rate so i think it's a, it's kind of a different, um, they leverage those associations in many, many different ways than, um, I think that, that this organization may be able to do in some capacity. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. What I'm hearing is that they, they're advocating for the industry versus connecting. No, they're, they're lobbyists. They're, I mean, yeah. straight up. Yeah. <laughs> well, but this is, I mean, uh, in many, oh, in many aspects. Right. They are doing lobbying work on the behalf of, of an industry. Right. You know, and, I, you know, I think they actually do a very, very, very good job of good, good lobbying activities. Right. Um, as opposed to maybe some other lobbying activities that are in the news all the time that mm -hmm. aren't so that aren't so good. <laughs> This is Corinne um, from Wow Wow. So I just wanted to add to that. Thank you, Eric. That was, I think, spot on. Um, so I know that Wow Wow, we belong to Next um, as a you know convenience store. And we uh, I was actually asked to present. Um, we have a conference, I want to say, Eric, you probably know when it is in October or September, end of September. Um, and I was a former regulator. So I'm actually going to sit on a panel with, um, I know at least one other person from KFUSE who was also a former regulator and now on the industry side. Um, to really talk about similar to what um, at the Food Safety Summit, very similar content, you know, how we bridge that gap and, and form those relationships, relationships, excuse me. Um, but I will say, I, I think, yeah, NAX serves a different function for us than AFTO. Um, I think there's more industry heavy content, uh, less regulatory influence at those, those conferences. So I don't know that I think they're two very specific things. Um, so I'm happy when I go to the next conference to make a plug for this group and for AFTO, of course. Um, I love AFTO and will always sing its praises, um, but I think there's just not a lot of people that know necessarily what what AFTO does and can do for them and gives you that access to FDA and to the states and to you know even local regulators. So um, I would say too, another opportunity is, you know, uh, Eric, too, again, to pick on you, you're active, I know, in CASA, which is our yeah. our local branch of AFTO. I think even there, there's opportunity for people that aren't really understanding the benefit of belonging to the larger organization. So um, maybe, if, you know, you give us like a elevator speech and, you know, a business card with a QR code on it. You know, we're happy to spread the good word about AFTO out there. That's a great idea, actually, you know, <laughs> like a business card that you can hand out to say. It's a really you know, good idea. Information. Yeah, I think there's, so we've had, you know, I, I just know this from the regulatory side. There's so many really good, very local um, food safety initiatives and collaboratives that these health departments are having. And I think there, there's opportunity to, I think even on the regulatory side um, and where I came from in Pennsylvania too, 
they're not even really always familiar with what AFTO does. So I think, you know, any kind of opportunity at those smaller meetings, it kind of just uh, more organically spreads the word out there. Um, more of like a grassroots effort, I would say. Raquel, can I make a um, a suggestion oh, maybe yeah. for one of our yeah. charges in the future? Oh. Um, so one of the charges, so I, I, I just um, was named a uh, co-chair for the cannabis committee this past or this this year so I'm trying to kind of revamp that but one of our charges is to reach out to other organizations that um have the same type of work or work that we don't need to duplicate and we let them know what we are and how we uh work and who afto is and um trying to collaborate with those committees is that something that maybe our yeah. committee can do as well and just say, hey, because I'm sure there's a lot of, you know, industry people that have that are part of these organizations. So maybe they could connect, you know, the committee with these other organizations to get the word out and ask, you know, hey, how can we collaborate? How can we um, market not only what we do, but what you do so that, you know, it, it, it helps everybody. Right. Is that right. something that we can do? Yeah. And I love that, that you're marketing both. Right. Because they are you know, there's a little bit of overlap, but not, not a ton. Right. And so, yeah, yeah that makes complete sense to me. Yeah, absolutely. So I'll, I'll make sure that I promote um, this industry group, group when, at AFTO as well. Um, so yes, Karen, Eric, awesome. Eric, I must've missed you. I was at CASA. I presented at CASA last week. So I, I, I'm i sorry if we didn't connect. Um, uh, I wasn't there. I was, I was in Chicago uh, food safety summit. Well, you know, I was saying all sorts of like drug related jokes that people did giggle about so you missed out on that um, <laughs> i love those <laughs> uh but yeah so so i'll i'll definitely promote it whenever i go to present and then yeah if that's if that's something that you know we want to do like you know i i think that's a great way for outreach and then also increasing membership so yeah perfect Ru, i just i just wanted to add that i love that idea. And I think um, all these initiatives are always well-intentioned. And uh, I think sometimes the problem is they're not always quantifiable, like, and we can't really go back and measure what progress we made. So I think with with that, we can really even quantify how many times we had this outreach. We plugged this at this, this, and this, and, you know, five times is maybe more than we did last year or 10, you know, whatever that that is, that threshold. But I think just being able to quantify that in some way would be great. And then we kind of know where we targeted and what opportunities are still out there. I'd love that, you know, putting metrics against it. Great discussion. Let's let's hop over to charge four um, in the interest of time. Um, and I don't know if this one's going to be as long. So obviously traceability, huge and impacts everybody. <laughs> so um, any updates on this charge? My sense is that we probably still need to keep it for next year since um, the rule doesn't go into, into effect till 2026 and probably the year after because we'll have that... Uh, uh, that discretion for the year. Any comments on traceability? Hmm. Yikes. <laughs> Did you say yikes? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. So hopefully traceability, not a new concept for anybody on this call. Uh, if it is, um, just you know, ping me and I can, I can get you caught up and then uh, you're going to have to be kind of pedaling fast to catch up. I uh, super grateful to, again, Arthi on, on, on this call on the, the general most team, she's leading it up for us. So a lot of work to be done. Okay. Let's talk about charge five, virtual inspections, remote reviews. Any, um, I'm not exactly sure if this one still needs to be a charge for next year. Um, you know, from what I understand, the two tier inspections are are moving along. So, um, so that's great. But you know, um, are people still getting virtual inspections or remote reviews? Uh, we have we have not. I haven't seen it in two years. Yeah. So let me put it this way: Is anyone opposed to us proposing to drop charge five? Okay, so uh, that uh, we will propose that. If anyone has um, a different thought, just um, you know, you can ping me uh, separately. 
Okay, anything else? Any mulligans on these charges? Okay, so next we're gonna talk a little bit about, and you know, now we, you know, we have 15 minutes or so left, probably you know, closer to 10 to give you time to get to your next meeting. Um, so this is this is what we did this year. And um, you know, it's a little bit different than what we've done other years in terms of um, you know, uh, we met monthly, we had a, a, a speaker, you know, then we had some discussion afterwards, and then you know, um, and some of the topics were talked about last year. Um, so in general, is this cadence good? Is it too frequent? Um, you know, th there was some talk about like, do we move it to quarterly meetings and have them longer and have it more discussion versus speaker? So, you know, tell me what you think, you know, what, what is best for you? Because the whole reason for this is for, for, for um, industry to, to get benefit out of this time together. So here's my opinion with yeah. the state of the state of evolution of our industry, but I'm um, as well as, you know, evolving regulatory environment, I think more is better right now with the way things are evolving extremely quickly and things are changing quickly. Uh, I think it's good to keep a, keep a pulse because, you know, two tier inspections, I, I had heard things in October that that program was dead. And then, you know, like, like you said, a couple months ago, it all of a sudden has been revived and everybody's talking about two tier inspection, which I'm a proponent of. But like things like that, and, and they released, you know, Appendix One was all redone. You know, there's just there's a lot of moving parts. States doing ca their own chemical stuff. So I think, I think the cadence is good. That's my opinion. Okay. Thank you for that. Anybody else thoughts? Okay, anyone opposed to keeping it monthly? Okay. Um, so, so we heard from Jeffrey, anybody opposed, anybody else opposed to having it moved to quarterly? Okay. Um, okay, so let's talk a little bit about, um, you know, just keep the discussion. What are some topics that you're going to want to hear about, you know, starting, um, you know, kind of next September-ish? Um, you know, my guess is that we'll still want to talk about traceability. Jeffrey, you mentioned Appendix 1. I think that would be a good one. Anything, other topics? Well, did the, you know, I noticed the two tiers crossed off, and I don't remember us talking about that. So maybe yeah. we revisit That's that. Right. We might have more information in September because I think that'll be about the time fiscal budget for, you know, some regulatory agencies come out. So they might have a better view on what they're able to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and um, you know, since we do have a mix of, of industry here, right? Um, you know, so two tier inspections is, you know, primarily for the, the manufacturing sector. And what it is, is having FDA um, do an inspection, basically SME to SME, right? So your SIFSAN SME is reviewing both your supply chain programs and your recall programs and, and things that are more corporately based. And then when they go to your manufacturing facilities, they're not having to review those, but they're just looking at how those programs are executed. So the whole premise is that it saves time from the inspection point of view, because you're um, instead of replicating something, you know that um, that happens, you know. So for General Mills, you know, if we have 14 different manufacturing facilities, instead of them having to go through each 14 and understand the program, et cetera, all they have to do is say, you know, it, it have specific um, uh, evaluation of of how those programs are executed. So, um, so what other topics? I mean, especially in you know retail space, restaurant space. Um, what other topics are of interest to this group? Laurel, drug and device. Yeah, I was going to ask. Um, do we need like what is the I guess need for drug and device in this meeting? Because I know. 
AFTO has um, the partnership with RAPS um, for mm -hmm. drugs and devices and combination products. And I know most of the people on the phone are for food. So I just kind of what are people's needs and desires as far as that goes? Are there uh, any Laurel. other? Carla, have yeah, you heard Laurel. Device? Good. Uh, Laurel, I think uh, John and Casey probably need to present on MOCRA because of that change in regulation that could potentially affect the rest of the industry uh, that FDA regulates. I also think strongly that uh, uh, D&D &D need to present uh, occasional topics uh, in order to lead the food industry to that next level because D&D &D is basically where most of the regulations are coming from. And because the regs are coming out of that, and moving into food, it would be wise for food to pay attention to what is happening in D&D. &D. Thank you. And Carlin, I completely agree. You know, when I think of, you know, what food is doing for traceability, drug and device has been doing it for, you know, what, 10 years or more. Um, you know, there's a lot to be learned there so we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, very true. The, the, uh... One thing I will mention on traceability is for the food industry to take a serious look at RX360 to see what the drug industry has been doing uh, within itself in order to help regulate itself. Yep. And I know, you know, <laughs> I'll go back to PepsiCo on this. Um, you know, Jason Bashara was leading the food defense part and he leaned over on drug on um, on pharma industry because they had been doing food defense, you know, way before it uh, it reached food, and so we were able to, you know, kind of shorten that learning curve substantially, you know, by by uh, <laughs> by stealing some of the ideas that drug and device did. Okay, what other any other topics? knowing that we only have about a minute or two. Well, another one would be HACCP since the D and D industry needs to accept HACCP. Oh, okay. So I'm wondering even if we need something, you know, a little higher level of D and D restaurant retail manufacturing, like what do they have in common? What do they have different? you know, so that we can understand, you know, where we can help each other. Okay, so in the interest of time, um, and again, um, you know, and I learned this from, from PepsiCo, and I don't know if this is a, a standard thing, but I know during COVID, you guys would start late and, and early, right, to give people time to transition in between. Um, and so I thought that was brilliant. Um, Okay, so one more minute. Any uh, mulligans for the whole meeting? Okay, then um, with that, I'm just gonna put a, a strong, strong plug. Um, I hope to see you in Grand Rapids. Um, you know, go ahead and sign up for the conference. I know the hotel rooms have been um, a little iffy, but I think they're you know coming up with some ideas for alternate um, venues. And um, great conference, great opportunity to interact with each other and with our state and local regulators. The um, the conference just has you know amazing presentations um, that I've looked at, and um, and you know at the end there's like going to be a tour I think on Thursday of the of the Myers Distribution Center and then of um, a, a lab where you can do the cannabis tour. Um, great networking opportunities I think during the evenings. Um, you know the Wiley lunch. So you know a really good um, venue. So um, please consider coming, and um, and if you're there, you know let's let's just get together. There will be an industry breakfast, and I'm hoping to get to meet you in person while there. So with that, I will um, close the meeting and um, wish you all a great rest of your day. Take care, everyone. Yeah, y'all. Thank care. you. Thanks, Raquel. Take care. Thank you.